What is this, Lady Ada? Hey, everybody, and welcome to our weekly hangout. This is a show and tell, which we do every week at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time on Wednesdays with me, Lady Ada, with me, Mr. Lady Ada on camera control, and in the background, the Adafruit Factory, where we design, test, manufacture, ship, and support all of the wonderful electronic goodies that you know and love. But now, for the next half hour, we're going to see what the community is up to as people from around the globe come by and show and tell what they're working on. So we're going to call on people, get out of here at 7.55. So take two or three minutes as we call on you. Kick it off with Tony, Adafruit Peep. Tony D, what's going on? Hey, yeah. So I have an update on the Sinobit uh, micro Python port. And basically, I've ported over uh, the ability to display Chinese text and characters. So this is scrolling across. I am Gong Tijia. I think I pronounced that correctly. I am Iron Man, uh, basically. So really fun, uh, kind of cool thing. And it doesn't really look like much. I mean, it's just scrolling uh, a, a message, right? Like just that's one line of code to do that. But to get that to work is a lot of complexity and a lot of uh, engineering for character encodings and storing the data. Because if you notice with the Chinese characters, they're a lot larger than English characters. So you can see it actually has some English going by. Uh, they're 12 by 12 pixels. And there are uh, 22,000 Chinese characters versus uh, 26 or so in English. That's quite a difference. And so storing that amount of characters takes a, a lot of uh, complexity and thought. And I can't actually store all 22,000. So that's the next challenge. This only has three Chinese characters, the three that are needed right now for this. But I have enough space free to fit uh, maybe about 500 characters right now. And I want to get that up to at least three or 4,000, because then I can get a pretty good vocabulary to print most Chinese uh, text and, and language. But really cool. And this is just kind of a hint at more to come, because the font that's on here supports English characters with accents. So French, German, Spanish, uh, all kinds of cool possibilities from that. Uh, I found some other fonts online that have like Hindi and Hebrew. So I think this is kind of going to be the gateway. So you know, the micro bit maybe was just scoped to the UK. And I think that this is now the macro bit, where it's a bigger scope. It's a world computer. So it's something that can show languages for any country, which is a really cool thing. So it's not just this is the Chinese micro bit. This is the world computer, potentially. You know, Maybe it'll change the world someday. So that's what I've been hacking on, is micro bit on the sino bit, or micro python on the sino bit. Okay. All right. Thanks cool. So much, that's the update. Next up, oh, well, let's go to Phil B. Yeah, yeah, Phil we'll B. Hey, Phil B. Hey, Phil B. Hey, Phil B. Hello there. Um, I don't know why. I got started on this personal project. A few weeks ago, I was I was getting an old computer up and working, some, something from my youth that I, uh, it was just a fun thing. And I, I just, I got this wild hair that um, there's a bunch of like old computers that I just think were really cool. And they weren't necessarily ones I, I had, you know, or owned. They just... Things I thought looked neat or were distinctive for their time. Um, and so I, I've been starting to collect these old machines. Um, uh, the fir first one that I got here, it's a um, uh, uh, Radio Shack Model 100. That's cool. Yeah, which is um, back, it uh, came out in 83. But um, at the time, like anyone who worked uh, as a reporter, uh, these were like a staple. They all had these machines. Um, and when I when I I got this off eBay, um, it was it was filthy. It was disgusting. So completely dismantled the whole thing. Um, you know, cleaned it out, and uh, it, it looks brand new now. And my plan with all of these machines, uh, one of the criteria is they have to fit in a shadow box. So they're all fairly fairly small, slim machines. Um, but my end goal, I'm not trying to do any, you know, restoration, you know, have it working type stuff, even if they're dead machines, just so they look nice, because I, I actually want, I want them to be kind of art pieces to hang up. But uh, the the Model 100 that I got, uh, it, this one does fortunately work. So it's kind of kind of cool to poke around with. It's a charming machine. It is. Yeah. Yeah. It was just it was a neat little slab. Like Actually, like, it, you know, it's like even now it's like it's if you if that was on Kickstarter, like you wouldn't be so surprised. Like it, it has this very um, kind of eternal classic look to it. It was just yeah. being color now. Like that's the only big difference. Pretty much. Yeah. So maybe maybe every couple of weeks when I get one um, up and working or if not working, at least looking nice, uh, maybe I'll pop up and, and 
show off what's, yeah. what's going on. Well, that's a nice looking Radio Shack Model 100. So thank you for sharing. You betcha. Okay, no, Pedro. Hey, what's up, guys? We got some practical 3D printing going on today. So this project is for these guys. These are our 30 gauge silicone cover stranded wires. They come in like a little spool of about 50 feet. And we got a bunch of different <laughs> a bunch of different colors. And so, you know, I always have them laying out on the table. So I came up with a little caddy. So I have these little pegs that you kind of slot them into. So they just come off like that, put them in. That's cute. And the base has a ball bearing in there. So I can spin the back there. Ooh. Or I can spin this piece. So it spins. And that's nice. And also these little notches here. So I can kind of thread wires through there if I need to to cut them so they're held in place. Um, it takes like about an hour and a half to print all the pieces. And it's a really simple design um, that's parametric. So if people have bigger, uh, di uh, bigger spool diameters or bigger bearings, they can totally change that because the file's open uh, to download and modify. Another thing we have is, uh, so we got ourselves uh, their set of these lovely coasters. These are the PCB coasters that are up in the shop right now. So um, one of the things we really want to do is make these bumpers. So these are printed in Ninja Flex, one of our favorite materials. So this is the bumper, really simple. It's super flexible. You can crunch it up and it won't break like regular PLA. Um, it's a great, you know, PCB. It's just I want to give it a little bit more grip to the table so our coffee and stuff doesn't slide off of it. And it just kind of clicks in like that. No supports required because it's got a little chamfer there, so it's optimized for printing. Oh, nice. And we got quite a few different colors in the Adafruit shop and Ninja Flex. I really like this peach almond smoothie because it yeah. kind of blends well with the with the rose gold color on Adabot here. So if you guys want to make those, we'll have those up on our Thingiverse page uh later today cool yeah, yeah. so much known pedro Thanks. Thank Thank you. You. hey um so i love um phil b's radio shack trc model 100 i happen to have a non-cleaned up model 102 and so oh, look wondering what nicotine stained ancient plastic <laughs> looks like that's it i bought this for five dollars from uh, a neighbor who had a yard sale, and he was a, a sports reporter who who went down to the racetrack, the horse track, and rode up the uh, the race. And there was a um, uh, a modem that he would couple to like a payphone somewhere and up upload his uh, his race results or something. I think was what he was doing based on some of the paperwork that was left in the bag. So this one I've had working uh, on and off for a few years. Right now it's it, it like is only displaying half the character, so something is up with it. But uh, I love these these sort of 100 and 102 uh, guys as well. They're very cool, um, and I and I like the cleanup that Phil did on his. Um, so. The other thing I want to talk about is for my live stream tomorrow, which is going to be at four o'clock Eastern time, I'm going to do a little project uh, that uses some of our uh, cool little banana plug um, connectors that we have in the shop now, as well as we have these little stackable banana plugs that you can um, screw a wire into from the side and then stack another on top. So what I'm going to show is uh, a tool that you can use to make really clean holes instead of using a drill. There's a, there's a nice way that we're going to punch holes into one of these sheet metal uh, project boxes. And I'm going to do kind of like a cut the wire type of puzzle or plug the right wire type of puzzle for an escape room or, or just for making a fun puzzle. Obviously, it's a skill you can transfer to a lot of other things. Uh, and we also have some of these. I think we have these in the shop, these little five millimeter LED yeah. Um, holders, right? So I'm going to show how to how to put some of those in there. And then I think I'm going to run it all on a little itsy bitsy 32U4 because I think these are super cool and I haven't used one in a project yet. So tune in tomorrow. I'm going to do all that in an hour. Wow. Woo. Amazing. Woo. In one hour. Okay. And you're going to couple the modem and upload the video. Damn right I am. All beep, right. Beep, beep, beep. Okay. Okay. Next, beep, beep. Uh, um, Sean. Sean. How's it going, Sean? Hi everyone, can you hear me? Hi, yeah, hello. Great. Yeah, cool. So uh, I wanted to showcase something that I've been working on. Um, lots of people do YouTube counters for the channels and I wanted to do something a little bit different and I wanted a, a service mount um, design project. So I designed and built some of these, what I call a, a Neo 7 segment PCBs. That's cool. So they use the, uh, the WS, what is it, 821? The, whatever they're called, NeoPixel style 
things. And um, so what I've got is just a, you might be able to see it. Hopefully I have to put some paper on it and a Spectre front. That's, cool. that's my, I mean, it's a new channel. That's my current subscriber count. So I've actually Hi, written a library. Hey. <laughs> um, so your I've channel? written a library What's for your it. channel? I'm going to subscribe right now. Uh, unexpected Maker, it's called. Um, so the plan with this is actually want, I wanted to make something that I could obviously build myself and stack them together. Um, they're basically just chain. Uh, here's a couple of a couple of them here, and they've just got uh, headers on the back. You might be able to see that pins in and out, uh -huh. and you can just chain a whole bunch of them together as many as you want. And then the library just you just tell the library how many digits you've got, and just send it streams of text. And so like one of the things um, let me just uh, recompile at the moment. So that's just like a vertical color change um but then i'm, I'm setting up oh, is that going there Wait, you go. i just subscribed so just it'll, it'll be 57 in a second or so or uh, no. no that's no it's not online at the moment okay uh, i had to not well, have it online to do this surprised. yeah so the idea yeah it was just that um so i'm thinking of putting these on tindy uh, i'm going to open source the design for them people can download them but because they're surface mount i'm not sure a lot of people yeah. are going to want to actually work on them. So I thought I'd put them on the Tindy store as kits for people that want to build them, surface mount, or just make some complete boards for people who want to use them. So I wanted to do something a little bit different than just the usual, you know, um, dot matrix display or something like that. So that's, so that's it. Yeah. All right. Great project. Email supported adafruit.com. You'll get a sticker for that soon to cool. be 57 subscriber. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, everybody subscribes to yeah. this to get more digits. <laughs> Thanks very much. Let's end to three digits. We can do it. Woo. On you, it's on YouTube trending already. The algorithm is broken or something. I don't know. It's working out. <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks, Sean. Next up, we're going to go to Daniel. Hello, Daniel. Hi, Daniel. Hello. And this week, I thought I'd show off a couple of projects that we made for my son's ninth birthday. He wanted a Harry Potter birthday party. So I wound up employing two Raspberry Pis and four circuit playgrounds and all these different things that we were doing. So we made, we made a bunch of wands for the kids. And uh, well, the first thing that we did, I did is I saw this. Actually, I think I saw one of these on your actually on your blog about somebody who made a daily profit. Um, so I made my own daily profit with my son, and you know he's a boy who turns nine. I don't know if you can see that, but that's uh, his own little sort of daily profit with a Raspberry Pi. Um, actually, I used the uh, I think it was Ada Box Five. I had a Raspberry Pi and a display, so I put it all together. Now we have our own little Harry Potter one for for that. And then we made a uh, circuit playground, and we made our own sorting hat out of the circuit playground. And so it was real, real simple. You just have a circuit playground in there, and a little circuit Python uh, with some of the wave files that you guys support. And you can uh, press a button. And... Oh yeah. Yep. Okay. That was Gryffindor, so I programmed it so you could do all the different uh, all the different houses for the kids, so they would get, in, get sorted into the different houses. So that was fun. Uh, and then I saw another one actually on your on your blog that I had to recreate myself. So let me switch my camera here and show you uh, one more here. This will work. All right. And turn the light off from there. Yeah. So so let's actually turn turn back on for a second, buddy. All right. So we, I made the uh, let, me, let me show you over here. There's this. Uh, Little sign, Hogwarts sign, which would be a. Uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Here you go. So I, I uh, had this little Hogwarts sign, and we made like a, a wand uh, training session. And so behind here is Raspberry Pi three hooked to a circuit playground that's going to go and turn a light on up here. And here I have um, a bunch of IR LEDs that are set up. So, and there's a camera, an IR camera in the middle. So, let me put this right here. Hopefully, this will work. It's got to be dark. Uh, let's see, can you see that? All right. All right, turn it off, buddy. All right, so I've got it set up so there's a reflective end on my wand. And when, it, uh, when it's tracking, I have tracking software on the Raspberry Pi that's tracking the end of the wand. Uh, the IR is reflecting off of the reflective tip, and the camera is detecting that. And when it is tracking it, the little LED turns red, and if you do a little, let me get it here, a uh, little thing, will uh, do the right movement, it'll turn the light on. And if you do the other, the other movement down, it should turn the light off. That's cool. And so the kids were able to sort of practice their own wand 
um, stuff, you know, they become their own sort of wizard. And so they did that sort of, uh, it's kind of a fun little product. So I'll get to you one item, a little reflective tip on it. So that was really fun. So. All right. And some of the Harry Potter stuff that we did for the party. Great, great work. Happy birthday. And uh, also, if you mail support at Adafruit.com, you get an Asian on the show. It's all sticker. Nice right. work. And happy birthday. Congratulations yeah. on living cool nine birthday. years. Yeah. All right. Thanks. All right. Next up, Coding Pro. Hello, Coding Pro. How are you? Hello. Um, you added my Discord bot to the Adafruit server. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, How are you doing that? And I'm going to show you i just updated it today to a newer version and i uh, open to discord so i'm in the live broadcast chat right now okay. yay i'm going to run a uh one of the new command or some of the adafruit working commands so first is make exclamation point make it yeah. it should if Oh, I might have to restart the bot, actually. Okay. Live demo. Um, but I'll talk about the other thing while it restarts. Okay. So, um, or actually, come back to me, maybe. Yeah, I'll come okay. back to you. No problem. All good. All right, JMK. Hey, JMK. What's going on? Oh, you're muted. Oh, wait, something weird happened there. It's all good. You're back. All you're right. back. We missed you. So, um, a while ago at Zaniacs, which is where I go for like Python and like it's like a programming school kind of thing with like STEM and stuff. And um, I followed this guide and stuff and I made a pie game. Um, I made a pie game game that's like it uses Minecraft's textures and has and um, has it uses Minecraft's textures. I updated and that was a while ago, and I basically forgot about that. It's been removed. It ended up being removed from JMKOS um, because it, it didn't. It couldn't really run independently with it. It needed a Windows and Pi game libraries, which couldn't be run in the console. Only the like log could, but you can't play a game in its log. So um, what I did is. Today, I upgraded, I removed a lot of pesky print statements because in Python, print statements are really annoying because they take up a lot of time for the CPU to handle. So um, what I did is, if I share screen, which one, two. All right, so here's the code, um, important stuff. This is defining all the blocks. And let's, you can see the map height and width are set in these two files. And the way you do is when you run setup, you can set the map height to like 12 by 12. Then now it's set 12. Oh. So it automatically adjusts these files. And that's a very simple program. It's only five lines of code and it updates files. That's how easy Python is. Anyway, let's run the game. Let's run the game. Here you go. Yay. We only picked 12, which is small. Normally I run it at like 40 by 50. It's having some lag issues, so it keeps sleeping longer than it should. Um, but anyway, I updated the character. It used to be like a yellow triangle to the actual Minecraft Steve character. Um, the clouds could go could go go slower. Spacebar it means big, so what I can do is I can just take all these and then. You can see the inventory adjusts. Uh -huh. There are actually eight blocks, but we made our map so small, the window adjusted to be smaller than the full inventory. Um, but if we type the number of that block, and I type one, oops, what happened there? Um, the dirt will go down by one, which is the number one I selected, and the grass will go up because that was a block I replaced. So then we can just like fill everything in with grass, well, I'll take the dirt and make the grass. So yeah, it's it's really simple. There's a tutorial, I think. I don't remember the website. But finally, again, I'm going to zip up this whole thing, make an installer for it using um, NSIS Installer Maker or whatever. And then I'm going to put it on the website, finally, again. Um, Yay! Also, what, what, just one quick thing. Ugh, what is that annoying message? If you uh, know, all right, d colon slash program files, that's what you can use to decraft. Um, 
That is not the player. There's the ad for Daikon. How did it get there? Um, anyway. I put it there. <laughs> normally, normally double-click 2D craft, the log will appear, and then you can play the game, which is why all that stuff was showing there. Uh -huh. You can see a lot of better stuff than just sleeping overtime shows up, but it's having a lot of lag issues, so it's just only showing that. But anyway, that's the game I made a while ago and finally updated. This right. says the um if I launch the I can run multiple versions of it. If I launch the run.bat, which is a oops, where to go? It's a newer version of the 2D craft version. It's 2D craft 2.0. This is just a launcher. So what it automatically does is it automatically launches the map height selector um, before playing the game. So it so now we have a much bigger map. Yeah. So Wow. So yeah, that's a simple game. I'll, once I upload it to my website and all that, probably the same time I upload the JMK OS to 1.8.2, then um, I will have the original the original guide that I found a, a long time ago, like a year ago or two. And once I found that, I'll write it. I'll probably put it in the guide section of um jam k according to the original guide and that's it for today so yeah, yeah. so much good work jam k good work with your game yeah. all right if you want a sticker you know where to get us okay <laughs> coding pro do you want to try the bot yep it's okay. working now right. so Go for it. Uh, I have it over here um if i run make it it, it will give you a random guide out of a certain certain amount that i define in a variable uh and also, if I run um, product, it will send a, it will like, uh, this is an example, it will give me a link, and this link will link to adafro.it slash the product number. Ah, that's, cool. that's cool. So it can be useful if you just want to explore product numbers or something. Um, also, okay. I change exclamation mark commands to exclamation mark help. So it shows all the different commands here. Oh, that's cool. That's handy. Like invite version about make product. That's cool. Good work. Good work, Cody. Very handy. Thank you for making the bot. Thank you for inviting it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all bots welcome. Okay, um, we got like eight minutes, so if everyone can keep it to a couple minutes each, we can get to everyone. We're going to go to Mark next. Hey, Mark, how's hey, it going? Hey, Mark, welcome. Oh, we can't hear you. You're muted. Maybe unmute your mic. Hey, is that better? Yep. Yeah. Hey, all right. So I got some commercial um, LED light strips a little while ago, and I thought they were pretty cool. I got them hooked up to HomeKit, <clears throat> and I thought I should be able to build up one of my own, so that's what I did. Um, so behind me, we've got some uh, NeoPixels that are running off a Raspberry Pi using a Fade Candy and um, a little bit of awesome open source software called um, HomeBridge, which uh, sort of connects HomeKit to um, the Fade Candy. And so I can do some pretty cool stuff with, let's see if the live demo works, turn on the Christmas lights, turn on the Christmas lights. Hey, there we Yay! go. Christmas is not canceled. So we'll go ahead and see if I can show the build itself. This is mostly um, just a build. So here is the actual box, and there's just a power button and a uh, graceful shutdown button for the Raspberry Pi. Inside is the Pi Zero and the Fade Candy and a little proto board and the pixels themselves. And I did a little write-up on my website, so there's a link to that in the... Um, channel as well and that's about it great okay, well there's pl there's plenty of room on that enclosure for asking on the show and tell sticker email support at adafruit.com and uh we'll send you out one awesome thanks okay next up blitz city hello blitz city hey blitz hey how's it going Good. hey welcome back thanks um so i finished up the neopixel rgb dialer um so i 3d printed a case uh i followed uh noam pedro's uh snap fit enclosure tutorial so that's working. Um, and then I'm just going to put some electrical tape over the LEDs so it doesn't blow out the camera. Um, but so it's got three knobs that control um, red, green, and blue 
values for NeoPixel. Um, and then I just put some red, green, and blue five millimeter LEDs here to kind of like label the knobs. Um, and then when you turn the knob, um, turns on the NeoPixel, it's um, an eight uh, NeoPixel strip, and then it displays the value onto the screen. I think the LCD is getting a little washed out though with my webcam, but you can mix colors. Um, and it kind of gives you like a real world um, view of like what values you need to put in for projects. And I also think it kind of has, um, would be helpful for like kids or people learning programming because it gives you kind of like a physical representation of like what you're doing in the code. Mm -hmm. um, and it's all running on a Feather M0 Express with a circuit Python. Okay. So, yeah. Nice. Good stuff. Thanks. Thank you, Lutzetti. Okay, we're going to fit everyone Sweet. in. If Sweet. everyone can keep to a minute each, we can get everyone. Next up, Rebecca. What's the updates? Hi. Hi, Rebecca. Hello. Um, so last week I was showing off some paper that I made, and I, I still have some paper here. Um, but I also said that I was going to try putting NeoPixels in paper, and I did that. Um, so this is a piece of paper. It's kind of hard to see, but there is a NeoPixel inside it, and I have it hooked up to a circuit playground, um, and I use make code just to make this simple example, and it switches color when I press the button. Great. So That's cool. Uh, okay. But it, it's really neat that I actually have um, – it, it's completely embedded. You can't actually take it out without destroying the paper. Yeah. That's cool. That's the way it should be. Yeah. Nice. All right. Excellent work. Well, if you want a sticker, you know, you can put the sticker on the paper. I, I could. There's plenty of space. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, oh, Rebecca. Cool. So Okay, we're going to go to Isaac, and then we're going to wrap up with that. Hello, Isaac. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hello. So I used to be in choir, and in order to get a starting pitch in choir, we had a, the director had a kind of a, a, a pitch pipe that she would blow so we know what note to start on. So I figured it'd be pretty easy to do in um, with the circuit playground. So there are seven LEDs that I have, and you can just kind of move up and down. And the color, to, the color tells you if it's flat or if it's natural or if it's sharp. And so once you find a pitch that you want, then you just blow. And <laughs> it's like really simple, so you can take it with you on the go. And um, I have a little guide that I that I wrote up just on a little GitHub page. So um, yeah, that's it. Nice, right. excellent work. If you, um, when you email, if you want a sticker, let us know. We'll do a little uh, post on our website to point to your guide. Awesome, thanks. Okay, okay, Matt, what you got? Hey, Matt. Hey guys, um, I got an exciting feature for Pyglass. I started getting voice commands. Uh, normally I'd use this um, mini USB microphone with an OTG cable. But I'm using this webcam for the demo. So let's see if it actually works. Hi. Go, 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 go. Take picture. Taking picture. Ooh, Ooh that's cool. I just started, so I only have like three commands, but <laughs> that's, that's great. That's all you need. <laughs> all right, this is neat. Voice command picture taking. All right. That's neat. Thank you so much, Matt. Yep. It's a great Keep coming back as you get more voice commands. Oh, I will. Outstanding. Start with three, then okay. before you know it, you're taking over the world. Well, that's it. We finished up right on time. Thank you so much, John, Rebecca, Matt, Mark, Jonathan, JMK. JMK. Daniel and Blitz City. We're here every single week, 7.30 p.m. Thank you for making this the best half an hour of our lives. Keep making and sharing. Ask an Engineer starts in one Two minute. minutes. Bye. Bye-bye.